Frozen CPU. We're here with liquid.cool slash CFX slash awesome stuff. Check out our website www.frozencpu.com for everything you see here. Today we're going to get into this uh, Vortex kit. Alright, get you going on a budget. Get your water cooling, CPU nice and cool. Let's get into the box. So anyway, get the manuals. Alright, full color manual. Uh, let's take a look in here just real quick about mounting. Uh, let's see, 1150, 1151, 1155, 1156, 1366, 2011. Uh, AM3 and AM4. Excited to see that. I think everything that's come out in the past couple of years uh, should have AM4 compatibility. Alright. So yes, as I said, nice full color manual. You guys don't read the manual often enough. Start reading the manual, alright? Read the manual. So anyway, tubing you're getting in here. Mm, it smells good. Uh, Size-wise, it kind of looks like 3 8 one half tubing. Uh, hard to really say. But um, it's, it's quite flexible. Not a bad feeling piece of tube in there. You get your fittings. Uh, these fittings are pretty cool actually. They're very grippy. Kind of like what Barrow is doing on some of their fittings. Um, they give you black fittings. You know, a lot of these kits come with silver uh, hardware. People want black. The hardware stuff uh, being black always looks nicer. Um, the silver can be hard to match with colors and other things, but the fittings themselves, uh, they seem to be very well machined. Not bad at all. Um, I wouldn't hesitate to use these fittings uh, with or without this kit. All right. Your CPU block, which comes in a nice little anti-stat bag. Uh, taking a look on here, the fins are actually uh, quite spacious. Not real tight fin density, therefore stuff is going to have less of a reason to collect in your CPU block. Uh, taking this apart, I think it'd be very easy to get in there with a light brush and clean those out. Uh, the CPU block itself is actually pretty nice looking, I must say. Only thing I want to mention about the CPU block is up here on the ears. Um, those ears are the little tie down points. Sometimes on your motherboard, uh, depending on where your north bridge is and you know, um, your MOSFETs and everything, your caps are, you may have to grind a tiny bit of this down. Uh, this is a very much a universal uh, bracket. It's going to work for the AM and the LGA stuff. So you may or may not have to modify this a little bit, but it's really not a big deal at all. Wouldn't worry about it. Nice to see pure distilled water. Um, this is probably better than your typical grocery store distilled water. You know. People, you really got to use this stuff when it comes to cleaning things for a brand new loop. Uh, you could run this as coolant and use the included dyes that come with it, um, but really good to have something to flush out uh, your system with before you get it started. Really the radiator. The radiator itself is 240. Um, it's pretty thick, looks like maybe 25 to maybe 22 to 28 millimeters thick, somewhere in there. So you are getting yourself some nice white LEDs. I know they come across on the camera a little bit blue. Uh, these fans are extremely quiet. I literally hear almost nothing. Um, in terms of airflow, it's pushing air through the radiator for sure. Uh, probably, probably not the biggest static pressure fan you're gonna find out there, but uh, really like these white accents. Uh, for the rubber dampeners on the fans. Might not seem like a big deal. Little things like that I really like. Uh, the actual construction of the radiator is quite nice. Um, the fin density is there. It's definitely uh, similar to your slimmer series of Alpha Cool radiators. That's kind of what it reminds me of. I think that's the ST series, the ST30s. That's about the density you're getting. I know it is a copper brass radiator. No aluminum in here. Um, looks tapped nicely. You know, no problems uh, with this at all. Uh, I've tested the screw holes, they're all tapped well. Really liking the way this looks. So, Liquid.Cool, also known for their liquid. Odd, right? So, uh, they both make a premix and a concentrate, both sold here at Frozen CPU. Uh, I gotta say, the opacity of this fluid is really nice. Um, it's an affordable product and the colors look great. Purple on camera, from what I can see, is coming up kind of blue. 
This is an excellent purple. Uh, purple violet, they're calling. The yellow, I love this yellow. It's like, um, boy, it's almost like a really intense, uh, like scrambled eggs in the morning. Fantastic, electric yellow. Now, uh, CFX has gone right out and told you that these are ethylene glycol based coolants. These are not propylene glycol coolants, and they even give you a nice warning right on the back, um, declaring that if you're using PETG tube, because as we know, you're not supposed to use ethylene glycol with PETG. If you use PETG tubing, uh, to leave this in that loop for no more than I think 12 months or a year, and then you're supposed to change the fluid. However, they say you can save the old fluid and use that to top off the new batch. Um, so kind of what I'm getting from that is this stuff is meant to last in a loop for a very long time. Uh, so if you're using just some soft tubing that can handle ethylene glycol or acrylic or something like that, uh, you're going to be able to run this stuff for a long time. Most coolant companies will not tell you how long to run it. Uh, right off the bat they're saying with PETG, 12 months. So I'm betting you can run it quite a bit longer than a year. So I'm guessing this is a 150 milliliter bottle. So you'll get one liter of coolant out of these. Uh, you'll essentially get this. So if you want to look further at any of the stuff I've shown in this video, check us out. Join us at frozencpu.com. Uh, leave me a comment. Uh, send us an email. Give us a call. Glad to hear from you. Have a good one.